worse. I shouldn't have arrested him. I shouldn't have tried him. I shouldn't be sending him to the cross. You are taking the advice of Tullius. Barabbas could have been quietly strangled in the cell and you wouldn't have to cope with that crowd outside. If I had listened to Tullius, I would have made a mockery of Roman law and I hate to think what Caesar would have made of me. Oh, the ingratitude of these Jews. When I think of the time I spent bringing the new water system to Jerusalem and the cost. You are a brilliant engineer, pilot. I suppose that's a compliment. Ah, oh, Tullius, at last. Come in. Tullius, we need your advice. Perhaps you could indicate a little more clearly what you have in mind. Something that will sit well with Caesar. As you know, Caesar has ordered no compromise with the Jewish extremists, particularly with mob heroes. You'll have to crucify Barabbas. Do you have an alternative? Is that what you call advice? Do you understand what's going on out there? Do you want this demonstration to turn into another uprising? If you don't crucify him, you'll offend Caesar. On the other hand, if you do, I suppose you'll have an angry mob at your throat. Thank you, Claudia. That's exactly what I need at this moment. My wife's analysis of the obvious. Right. There is, of course, one possibility. They know that on their Passover, you perform an annual act of mercy. By commuting the death sentence of one Jew. Symbolic and probably a mistake. Last year, I seem to remember it was an arsonist. And this year? Are you seriously suggesting that I free Barabbas? A Jew who has murdered a Roman soldier. No, oh, there's got to be another way. I will not surrender to these barbarians. Since this is meant to be a magnanimous Roman gesture to a conquered people, why not take it a stage further and allow them to make the choice? Listen, they've made the choice. Exactly. You offer them another criminal, they choose Barabbas. It's no longer your decision. Listen to it. These days I can understand. You must hate leaving the peace of the temple. The peace of the temple. How long will that last? I don't envy you. Not the easiest time to be high priest of Judea. Indeed not, Nicodemus. Barabbas kills one Roman soldier and the Romans retaliate. A hundred for one. It's not the kind of arithmetic I favor. Do any of us. Revolutionary zealots. Their heroics cost precious Jewish blood. Well, Joseph Caiaphas, I am grateful to Barabbas for one thing. If nothing else, he's taking your mind off Jesus. Well, that depends on whether you have made my warning to him clear. You know this heretic has been seen just outside the city? I'll let him dare enter it once again, and I will have him arrested by the temple guard. There's the well. There's the man with the pitcher. Peter, how could he know that the man with the pitcher was going to lead us to the sin? He arranged it. You can't all be miracles, you know. There's a practical side to him, too. Peter. <laughs> Where are you from? Galilee. Both of you? Yes. Occupation. Fisherman. Name. Simon. What's your Jew name? Shimon Bayona. And yours? John. Hebrew name, Yohanan. You don't smell like fishermen. We wash for Passover. You fish with the sword in Galilee? A man has to protect himself. Is it against the law in Jerusalem? Move on. Hey! 
What do they think of Barabbas in Galilee? We don't know him. Of course. You were all faithful subjects of Caesar in Galilee. We render unto Caesar what is Caesar's, and to God what is God's. That is too well put for a fisherman. Who said that? Our rabbi. And what belongs to Caesar? Taxes. And your God? Love. <laughs> Excellent. We could do with more Jews like your rabbi. On your way. I am Jacob. Peter. John. Come with me. When is he coming into the city? In time for the Seder. I was hoping he changed his mind. It's foolish, very foolish. He knows the danger. Then why? I suppose he would say the prophet Isaiah predicted it. And the prophet Isaiah didn't attack the courtyard of the temple and drive the merchants and money changers out with a whip. What is the one thing these Jews are really passionate about? Their religion. What if we were to arrest one of their high priests, for instance? Oh, you're insane. Don't you worry, my dear. It wouldn't be practical, would it? But it does point the way. Their religious council... The Sanhedrin. Thank you, Tullius. They're against Barabbas. They don't like zealots and revolutionaries any more than we do. Now, if we could find someone that they dislike who has also violated Roman law... You'd have the same problem, you'd just have another Barabbas. Not if he has no political supporters, no mob behind him. There is a rabbi. A Galilean, I believe. Only a few days ago, he started a rampage in their temple. His name is Yoshua Bar Yosef. How do you know? I've seen him. Well, I don't care who he is, as long as he's broken the law and arresting him won't provoke further demonstrations. What if he's innocent? He's a Jew, Claudio. I'll look into it if you like. Yes, do. Before they start shutting themselves up for their interminable ceremonies. When will the others be arriving? Later. After we've seen the room, I'll go back to the well and wait to lead them here for the Seder. My servants will look after you tonight. Thank you, Jacob, but that won't be necessary. I want to, Peter. It's the least I can do. Anything. Anything I can do, I'm at his service. Jacob, thank you. Prepare the table for you. 
I've been talking to some people who just arrived from Galilee. There's been rioting there. The Romans have killed more than a dozen people for protesting against Barabbas' sentence. Do you think these people were sinners? Above all other sinners in Galilee? And that is why this happened to them? Of course not. It happened to them because they were Jews protesting against Roman tyranny. And when the Tower of Shiloh fell in Jerusalem and killed 18 men, do you think it was because they were sinners? Do you, Judas? No, I don't. They were killed because the mortar was badly mixed and they happened to be working on the tower. What does that have to do with the massacre in Galilee? I'm saying that whoever does not repent will perish in one of many ways. I understand. What I don't understand is why, even though I'm not from Galilee, I seem to care what happens to Patriot Sam more than anyone else. Whatever happens in Galilee is small compared to what will happen when the Day of Judgment comes. And it is coming. What Judas is saying, Rabbi, is that if anyone must be killed before the Day of Judgment, let it be the Romans. He wants to reach God's kingdom without having to die on the way. I would die for a cause I believe in. No man wants to die. Then why are you going into Jerusalem tonight? Knowing that... Knowing what? What everyone knows. That there are men who wish him dead. It is necessary that the Son of Man go into Jerusalem on the Passover, suffer at the hands of the lawyers and the priests, be betrayed and crucified, and then raised on the third day. <clears throat> Why don't you ever say directly that you are he? Judas, stop asking questions. Let him ask. I want to believe. I do believe, but we're young. There are many Passovers ahead and a lot to do here and now. But I can't help thinking that as a Jew, you could use the powers we've all witnessed to help other Jews like Barabbas, who fight the Romans. You think too much, Judas, and feel too little. But that is as it should be. I have given you and the others certain powers. Use that power well. And I'm asking you to help me use it, to strengthen the unity of the Jews against the conquerors of Israel. You haven't listened, Judas. You seem to think that I have come to bring what you call peace on earth. For you, the earth is Israel, the only enemy, Rome. You must think in broader terms, Judas. You have all been with me for a long time. Seen what I have seen. Misery, corruption, vengeance. There will be no peace yet. Nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes, famines, pestilences, and fearful signs from heaven. I'm quoting you, Master. I want to give you an eloquence and a wisdom that your enemies will not be able to resist. 
It will not be easy. You must be secure in heart, or you will be alone, betrayed by your friends, and even by your family. You are the master of the house, but you should have asked me. Why, Ruth? I've never doubted your hospitality. Passover is a family feast. Why take risks? Some people are worth taking risks for. And he is one of them. What do you think will happen if they find him here? Happen? Does something have to happen? Jacob, every child in the street knows what Jesus did in the temple and to you, among others. It's Pesach, Ruth. Please. What do you think will happen? They find him here. You'll be ruined. Yes, perhaps. You find humor in ruin? No. But something inside me finds a certain joy in his words. Every time I hear him speak, it's like an illumination. What profits a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Before I became your disciple, I knew a lot of the people who are now your enemies. When we came to Jerusalem, I didn't think they'd recognize me. But they did. The first day of the temple, they tried to talk to me. I know. How? I saw them. Well, why didn't you tell me? Oh, you confuse me. Why do you think I've been trying to stir up your anger over what happened in Galilee? Turn me back to Galilee. Now? Yes. I've seen you angry before. Why not now? Of all my disciples, I've sometimes felt closest to you because you've understood my words best. But what you expect of me, Judas, is so much and so little. Life here, instead of life eternal through my death, you think you can change that, for my sake and yours, I shall neither stop you nor judge you. What do you mean? I'd rather die. I know that, too. Come. Each of you will make your way into the city so as not to attract attention. This is most important. Nothing must happen until the Seder is over. Each of you will make your way to the well. Peter will be waiting there to take you to the Seder. Go now. And be careful. The truth, Nicodemus, is that something will have to be done about this troublemaker from Galilee. <laughs> Joseph Arimathea and I are not the only members of the Sanhedrin who see no wrong in Jesus, apart from a few departures from the Torah. A few? Allow me. I have studied the law longer than any of you. So I begin. Breaking the Sabbath, placing himself above family loyalties, exploiting the words of the prophets. Which he knows and quotes without fault. Contributing to public panic by predicting the end of the world 
vandalizing the temple and using magic tricks to seduce gullible people who need miracles. And you see no wrong in these things? If the angel saved Isaac and the walls fell down at Joshua's trumpet and Moses brought the plagues on Egypt, why shouldn't miracles happen? Because those were ancient times. And who knows what happened? This is today, now, modern times in Jerusalem. Face reality, we're a conquered people, Nicodemus. The miracle we need has nothing to do with making wine out of water. Apart from the miracles, and you know how things get exaggerated, he's done very little more than most of us have done at one time or another. When was the last time you claimed to be the Messiah? Can't you control your son's tongue? Aaron, please. No. Forgive me, Father. Good Pesach, gentlemen. Oh, uh, Father, there was a, a Roman officer at the gate a while ago asking questions. About what? He was particularly interested in Jesus. Did he say why? I thought you'd like to know, so I asked him. And? He answered me with a question. Where is Yeshua bar Yosef in perfect Hebrew? Well, what did you tell him? The truth, what else that I don't know? But no Roman ever believes a Jew. They've been talking about him for the last hour. Have you ever seen him? Yes. I've also heard him speak. Where? In the synagogue. Jesus' crime is not in his claim that he is the Messiah. The prophets tell us to expect one in these years. No. The blasphemy is in his heresy. And that is so monstrous that even were he a model Jew in all other respects, it would damn him. What heresy? I'm aware of no heresy. Because you are not a religious scholar, Nicodemus. A heresy that demands the understanding of a religious scholar can hardly be serious. The voice of the Philistines. That's enough, Aaron. Look, try to understand. On the day of judgment, how will the one and only God, blessed be his name, judge us? By our faith in him. No. You are as wrong as he is. Judgment depends on what you do, the way you conduct your life every day. God judges you for your honesty, your charity, your love for your family, your obedience to his law. I mean, faith in itself is not enough. Every, every Jew believes in God. You have to work for his judgment. Jesus says the same thing. He says to feed the hungry, to clothe the naked, to take care of the sick. Where is the heresy? The heresy is that he claims the power to forgive sin. Only God has that power. He says, along with the other radicals, that the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. And in this, he is putting himself above the law which God has given us. And above all, he says, believe in me and you will be saved. Don't you understand? If, if you are a thief, a whore, a murderer, if you dishonor your father and your mother, just repent of your sin and he will forgive you. Believe in him and you will be saved. Not believe in the law and obey the law and be saved, but him. He is cutting at the very heart of Judaism. Mm. Their old manuscripts and sacred books predict one just about now. No one really believes in it. But um, since his arrival signals the end of the world, aspiring messiahs like Jesus tend to make the Jews a little nervous. Mm. But is he a criminal? Their lawyers and rabbis take a poor view of him. I have a strange feeling that given the uh, proper encouragement, they might even charge him with blasphemy. Yes, I don't know. The Jew we want must also have violated Roman law, or at least appeared to have done so. There's an old political device, Tullius. It's called a fixed trial. This report says that he calls himself king. King of the Jews? That's not bad. That could be read as sedition. It's only one king, and that's Caesar.
But what if he is the Messiah? How could he be the Messiah? He's not even a good Jew. Nevertheless, what if he is? Wouldn't that put you, Joseph, as the spiritual guide of the Jewish people in a somewhat delicate position? I don't think we should do him the honor of allowing him to spoil our Passover, nor to divide us any further. We all agree on that, I hope. If only he'd stayed in Galilee. Excuse me, Master. A Roman soldier just brought this. He said he'd wait. It's from Pilate. He wants to see me at once. About the Passover pardon? No. About Jesus. I'm sorry it took so long. I stopped to get this. It's a list of the men who travel with Jesus. For what purpose? They may try to help him escape. I've tried to find out as much about them as possible. They're mostly fishermen. Fishermen? <laughs> Go on. The two known as Peter and Andrew are in partnership with James and John. They seem to have employed several of the others at one time or another. Well, Claudia, now you know where to get fresh fish. Shall I go on? <laughs> yes, Douglas, please do. Simon, also called Peter. Hebrew name, Shimon bar Yona, native of Bethsaida. Most prominent of the twelve, he is constantly with Jesus and known to be closest to him. His house in Capernaum is their headquarters in Galilee. Matthew, Hebrew name, Levi bar Halpai, a pseudonym, means the Lord's gift. Ex-tax collector for Herod. Philip, also known as Pinchas, thought to be a disciple of John the Baptist, who was incidentally decapitated by Herod. Andrew, Hebrew name Anderai bar Yona, brother of Peter, also a disciple of John the Baptist and one of the first to follow Jesus. Thomas, Hebrew name Toma, believed to have less conviction about Jesus than the others, place of birth and occupation unknown. John, Hebrew name Yohanan, Son of a Galilean fisherman named Zebedee, believed to have been born at Bethsaida, has a brother named James. James, Hebrew name Yaakov bar Zebedee. Jesus refers to the two as the sons of thunder, reason unknown. Simon, Hebrew name Shimon. Peter's name was Simon until Jesus changed it to avoid confusion with this one. Nathaniel means gift of God. Hebrew name bar Talmai comes from the village of Cana in Galilee, brought into the group by Philip. James the Younger, Hebrew name Yaakov bar Halpai, occupation unknown. Thaddeus, Hebrew name Levi bar Tadai, occupation fisherman, not much else is known. Judas Iscariot, Hebrew name Yehuda Ishkerioth, comes from a family of leather workers. Of the twelve, he is the only one not a Galilean. Keeps and dispenses the group's money. Probably the brightest of the lot. I am the high priest, Joseph Caiaphas. Yes, Rabbi, I know. The procurator is expecting you. Come this way, please. I'll wait here. You'll understand. Understand what? That a Jew defiles himself by entering the home of a Gentile. I'll be back. You say you want no trouble this Passover, no demonstrations, no fighting in the streets. No, we don't. And why haven't you arrested him? We can't during Passover. Why not? I've seen your temple guards arresting pickpockets. Pickpockets, yes, Excellency. This is not quite the same thing. I want him arrested and brought to trial. It 
it's against our law to convene the Sanhedrin for a trial on Passover. You're not obliged to call it a trial. Thank you, Excellency. But it's more complicated than that. He has a highly volatile following. You mean revolutionary and dangerous? Besides, we don't know exactly where he is. Oh, I know you, Rabbi. If Jesus is what you say he is, you'll have someone keeping track of things. You'll find him. We have warned him to stay away from the city. Have you now? On pain of what? You know we Jews are not allowed to carry out the death sentence. That's right. You can only condemn. That's an arrangement that should suit you, Rabbi. We Romans take the final guilt upon ourselves. How long have you people been doing business in the court of the temple? Five, six hundred years. Mm. It's the center of their daily life, isn't it? Much like our forum in Rome. You don't want him to start another riot there, do you? Of course not. He's not going to go away, Rabbi. I want you to arrest him, find him guilty, and turn him over to me. Guilty of what? Whatever you wish. But find him guilty. Excellency, I must tell my people something. It should satisfy your people to know that I am doing this to prevent bloodshed in their fair city. Then why don't you have your troops arrest him? You know, Joseph Caiaphas, there are a dozen men who would give anything to be appointed high priest in Jerusalem. I'm sure there are, Excellency. As many as covered your office of procurator in Judea. I will not warn you a second time. Why is Jesus so important to you? Why do you... Why my patience like this? I was only thinking of what could possibly be to our mutual benefit. I apologize. But if you could instruct your troops to... Do your work for you, is that it? Our work, Excellency. Besides, your men are so much more efficient than mine. <laughs> All right. I'll strike a bargain with you. You find him. You arrest him. And my troops will be there to back up your temple guards. How's that? Hmm? Tell me, do you people really believe that Passover story? I mean, do you really believe that the Red Sea parted so that you could escape the Egyptians? <laughs> we escaped, Excellency. Is it then? Did you steal it? No. I believe you. Uh, give it to me. It belongs to other people. Who? The friends of mine. Oh, that's what I thought. And I know the names of at least one. Of course I know yours. You're Judas. Judas of Karyoff. No. You're mistaken. No, I'm not. They pointed you out to me the other day at the temple. What do you want? To know who else is in the city? Jesus, for instance? I don't know where he is. I swear, I don't. The one you'll have to convince is the high priest. What 
possible interest can Pilate have in Jesus? If anything, Jesus has gone out of his way not to offend the Romans. I know Pilate. He has some devious purpose in this. Well, from what you've said in the past, I should think you'd be happy to hand Jesus over to him. Jesus is dividing us with his fanaticism. And anyone who divides us feeds the Romans. If I had not listened to you and his other so-called friends, I would have had him arrested after the outrage of the temple. Done what with him? The right thing by my conscience. I would have had him tried for heresy by a properly convened Sanhedrin. With Passover, that is out of the question. What will you do, my son? I'll try to find him. And if you do find him? I will do whatever has to be done. Even to handing him over to Pilate? Yes, Nicodemus, yes! The survival of our people hangs by a very thin thread, and I will not have it threatened that much for the sake of any one man. We must see the high priest. I'm sorry I can't disturb him. He has guests. Important guests. Do as you're told, and quickly. Don't worry. It's not you they're after. Yes. Good pace, Sack Rabbi. And to you. I have someone here I think you'd like to see. Who is he? He's one of Jesus' disciples. We spotted him coming into the city. He was alone? Yes. What is your name? Tell him. Judas. Speak up. Judas of Kerioth, Rabbi. Bring him in. You say he is not in the city? No. Then he is outside the city. I don't know. He is making his way into the city, is he not? His destination, Judas, you must know that. I don't. Why do you refuse to tell us? Because I love him. You also have your duty as a Jew. He feels he has his duty. What he feels is dividing the Jewish people at a time when it is desperately important that they act in unity. That has to be stopped, Judas. It's painful to betray what you love. Do you think that a God-fearing Jew, be it you or any other, should lie to his spiritual leaders. Would Jesus lie? No. Then do as he would. What will you do to him? That must be for us to decide. If his destiny is to be betrayed by one of his own, it's right it should fall upon me. I've already committed that sin in my mind. Even today, he was trying to tell me. And now I understand. My only concern is not to protect myself, but him until the Seder is over. It is what he wants. And I have the power to do it by striking a bargain with you. A bargain? Is that really what it comes down to? I assure you, you will be rewarded for your service. I don't want any reward. I can't tell you where he is because I truly don't know yet. But someone is waiting to take me to him. And if you detain me any longer, that person will go and I'll have no way of finding him. And if you release me but insist on having me followed, I shall refuse to go. And nothing you can do will force me. That much free will I still have. You're free to go. 